New information continues to reveal the Biden administration's failures during the Afghanistan withdrawal. But unfortunately, it isn't obvious if our government's leaders will actually be held accountable. So how do we prevent something like this from happening again? Joining us today is the Charles Koch Institute's Vice President for Research and Policy, Will Ruger. Will, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So, Will, as the daughter of a veteran and the sister of an active duty member, I have a vested interest in knowing whether or not we've learned anything from this experience. And I know our viewers who have similar relationships are also wondering what's ahead. What lessons should our country's leaders take away from the Afghanistan withdrawal? Well, clearly, there's a lot to learn about how we did the evacuations. Um, but I think what we really need to understand is that it's the product of actually 20 years of a failed approach to the Middle East and to Afghanistan in particular. And so I think we need to separate out the messiness of the implementation from the actual decision to withdraw, which was quite sound. I mean, the fact is, is that the United States had long ago achieved what it needed to in Afghanistan, but we expanded the mission, we expanded the war aims to something that was quite unrealizable, right? It was part of an idealistic project uh, to remake places like Afghanistan, and it was bound to fail. And unfortunately, what we've seen over time is that uh, you know, the American public has been misled about this project, and so it may have come as a shock to the Americans when the Afghan government and the Afghan military melted away and led to the very uh, quick collapse of the government of Afghanistan. So understanding that this is really, I mean, 20 years to look at, I do want to focus on the withdrawal specifically for my next question. There are still Americans stranded in Afghanistan. I mean, that is the reality that we're hearing. What sort of leverage does the Biden administration have left to get them out? Well, the first thing is that the Taliban does not want to become the same type of international pariah it did after 9-11. Uh, you know, the government uh, is going to be, uh, you know, really is going to need uh, the assistance of the international community economically because the Afghan economy became so dependent on Western aid. Uh, and so there's a, there's a bit of a, a self-interest there for the Taliban. The other thing is that in terms of, of um, you know, any attacks on Americans there, uh, you know, the Taliban also has an incentive to make sure that the United States doesn't uh, come back someday. And so, you know, I think that they will want to usher out these Americans uh, in a relatively speedy fashion, uh, consistent with those interests, because, again, this is not a good regime. And so should we, we shouldn't trust to their, I think, um, uh, you know, to their virtues. I think we, what we should do is really try to trust on their on their interests. So in the past, you've said that though Afghanistan was a mess, Vietnam and Iraq were bigger failures. Can you elaborate a little bit more on what you were saying here? Yeah, again, and I, I've been a critic of how we've approached the, the war in Afghanistan, and I've argued that we should have been out of Afghanistan far sooner than now. In fact, I wish we had met uh, Trump's uh, May 1st deadline, consistent with the Doha agreement, or even gotten out of Afghanistan years before. Um, and it's certainly been a, a mark against our foreign policy uh, that we ad adopted this nation building project that was bound to fail. Uh, and it is tragic that 2,400 Americans have been killed, tens of thousands wounded, and we've spent trillions there. So it's certainly a mess. It's certainly a mark against the approach we've taken to the world. But Iraq was the biggest foreign policy debacle of our generation. I mean, you're talking about over 4,000 Americans killed, tens of thousands wounded there, trillions spent, all for something that was an unnecessary war. It did not lead to, to supporting American prosperity or American safety to attack Iraq and to engage in a regime change and nation building project there. And obviously Vietnam with over 50,000 Americans killed, a very long war, quite costly. These are two huge debacles. Now, I think that what this points out is the fact that we have so many cases in which we can point to in which our foreign policy has not worked to make us safer or make us more prosperous, is I think that we can point to the fact that we need a new approach to foreign policy because we're arguing about which types of interventions have been more of a failure. We ought to be talking about which types of positive engagements are successful at advancing our interests. Well, Will, we appreciate all of those solutions and look forward to hopefully a brighter future when it comes to foreign policy. Thank you so much for being on Save the Nation today. Great, thank you for having me. Another amazing example of grassroots activism is the tide of parents rising up across America to voice their concerns about what children are being taught in public schools. Mason Weaver will join us next to discuss critical race theory in the classroom. Don't go away.